Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic, naturopathic doctor and founder of Amorta Swa Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my awesome co-host, Donovan. And I was almost going to call you Dr. Donovan for whatever reason, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. which is, you know, I've known you for so long. You just seem so smart, as smart as a doctor. So <laughs> I'll be a doctor but, for this episode. Yes, you could be a doctor for this episode. Um, by the way, just for the audience, he's not actually a doctor. So this is not medical advice by any means. But I'm not anyway. a doctor in the same way Dr. Dre is a doctor. Right. Not at all. Not at all. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And this week on Happy Talks, we're going to be talking about pride today. Yes, pride. There's some good connotations and not so good connotations. So Donovan, kick off this conversation. What are your initial thoughts about pride? Yeah. So, you know, in the same vein of what you just said, I, I feel like pride gets used in both a positive and negative way, right? Depending on the context, right? Like if you are proud of something that you've accomplished, like getting a college degree or being a doctor, actually, um, in general, <laughs> those are positive connotations. But if you do something like call someone prideful, generally that comes with a negative connotation. So there's definitely something to unravel there, right? And I think it kind of centers around this idea of uh, judging whether or not someone should be proud of something. Right. And maybe we'll unpack it. Maybe it won't be, but that's sort of like my initial thought is like, you know, if someone is prideful, oftentimes they're proud about things that other people don't see as something to be prideful about mm -hmm. or have pride in. Right. Um, whereas generally when, when you are, looking at like pride for an accomplishment of some sort, mm -hmm. then um, it tends to be something that like you feel that you have deserved. So you're like, oh yeah, of course I'm proud of this because it's an accomplishment that makes sense to me. Anyway, that's getting a little rambly and disoriented. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. Yeah, no, I agree that, you know, the, the pride that is positively associated in my mind is the one where you worked hard for something for so long and you finally reach whatever you were working towards accomplishing and you get that. And of course it's, it's natural and it's good and it's respected to have pride around that. But then when I think about the other type of pride, I think of like the person who has too much pride to apologize for something that might've hurt someone's feelings. I think that's, that's more relational and I'm sure we can dig delve into it. And for whatever reason, I don't know if you've watched Love is Blind on Netflix. Um, have you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have. Oh, you have. So you've watched this second season? Yep. Yes, yes. I have too. And I I was really annoyed with uh, Shake, the, the Indian person who was just very superficial about um, looks and Dipti and kept commenting about how he wasn't physically attracted to her, which is totally okay and understandable, but to like say it in such a disrespectful way behind her back to all her friends, that was not okay. But he did not see how that was like inappropriate and hurtful. And yeah, I get like, okay, it's okay to not be attracted to someone. Obviously, I don't expect everyone in the world to be attracted to me. <laughs> that would be actually very overwhelming and probably creepy <laughs> if everyone was but it's just like how you go about it and your behavior and your attitude and how respectful you are of you know saying something hurtful behind someone's back of someone who really cares about you is is not cool but he didn't have enough or his pride he eventually did but it took him like a ridiculously long time and I don't I feel like his apology was very fake, but you know, this is personal opinion, <laughs> but, but he like refused to apologize for it, for how he was talking about her very disrespectfully 
And when he knew it was going to be on national TV, our family was going to see it all. His family was going to see it all. So that pride is like the bad kind of pride. <laughs> that that really got to me um where i was like yeah no i don't want that type of pride where you are too proud of your own opinions you're so stuck in your and it's okay to have your own opinions but you're so stuck in your own opinions that you're not even like considering how it is for another person how it is for them in their shoes and having the honor and respect to apologize for you know not it's not wrong to not be attracted to that person. That's not what you're apologizing for, but it's how you went about talking about it <laughs> disrespectfully is what needs to be apologized for. Anyways, my little rant. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, as you're talking, uh, was it became more clear to me that there's actually, at least in my experience, two very distinct things when we talk about pride. Like the word is used in two very different ways, yes. right? Because one is, is a feeling. Right. And it's something sort of based around um, you, you mentioned accomplishments. I know people can be proud of like certain traits or their background or ethnicity or whatever else. Mm -hmm. And then there's this other, there's a, this other way that we use pride or speak about pride. That's the way people are acting and how they interact with other people. Right. It's like almost tied into um, arrogance or yeah. just, it comes, it comes like the negative connotation of it comes built into all these other, like, it's like a bucket of traits, right? right. And behaviors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just crazy to me because it's, it's so different from what I think about the feeling, right? When I think about the feeling of pride or like, yeah. you know, if somebody says they've done something and they're like, yeah, no, it's not a big deal. And it's like, you should be proud of that. Yeah. You know, like it's such a different way of using that word. Um, and I guess I don't have like a main point I'm trying to make here, but it just as you were talking about it, it became like so clear to me that it's not even like, you know, slight, subtle variations on like, oh, maybe we use it this way. Maybe like it's two, at least in my mind now, very clear, distinct terms, even though it's the same word. Right. I agree. I almost think that there should be a different, it should be an entirely different word. So there's not so much confusion or I'm sure in the Webster's Dictionary they have define it in both manners probably most likely but i'm not sure because there there is so much positive around it you know the other thing when i think of the word pride you know obviously the lbgtq community has really like held on to it and it's a very great term in the sense that you know for for people who've been in, in the closet for so long to have enough pride to come out and be proud of who they are and honoring their most authentic self and being true to who they are, that that's something I'm very um, in awe of and inspired by. I think that's an incredible thing to be proud of. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. But then it's like the, the arrogant people. <laughs> it's like the, I guess it's a judgment call, like the judgment call of people who use their pride, um, I guess in a way to, to diminish other people. I think that's, maybe that's the distinction of like, are, are you proud of the fact that you kind of like bulldozed over like people beneath you? Or are you proud of like what you did and how far you've come um, in your own personal journey and growth versus like the other type is kind of like, having a negative side side effect to other people versus the pride on a personal level. It's really more about where you've come and how far you've come in your journey. I guess that was how I would distinguish it. Yeah. I, huh. I'm going to float a definition and let's see how this <laughs> yeah, lands. Let's, let's play with that. Yeah. So to me, um, I was thinking it's, it's maybe your esteem as related to a particular thing, right? I have to say thing because it can either be like an accomplishment or piece of your history or whatever. And so I feel like when you have really high esteem in something like your opinion, right? Like the example from before, right? Like right. bulldozing other people when just thinking you're always right and mm -hmm. uh, being proud or just like having high esteem and saying things that are hurtful, right? Where you're like, well, I needed to say this. I right. feel like that's when real. you, <laughs> like, yeah. That's what he would keep saying. 
So Sorry. I feel like when you when you uh, have sort of this high esteem or regard mm-hmm. for a thing, yeah, that other people are like, "What the what? What is this? What are you doing?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's when you move into sort of this like more negative connotation of pride. Whereas when you have high regard for or esteem for part of your experience or something Mm -hmm. that uh, people look upon actually favorably, then it moves into these more like positive areas. I don't know though. Uh, How's that land? Yeah, no, I think that that makes a lot of sense as we are kind of unraveling this whole idea of pride. And I think we're, we're both in the process of unraveling our thoughts around it. I'm trying to, um, I'd, I'd be curious about your opinion on, you know, if someone was not sure, <laughs> like in that weird state of like, I, because actually I, I can speak from personal experience, you know, sometimes I think like culturally from Asian culture, it's like, you don't want to boast and you don't want to be like, Ooh, mm-hmm. look at all what I've done. No, we're taught to be more, more humble, or at least in my my family, you know, you're not like, yeah, I got an A, just be like, oh, whatever, <laughs> you you didn't fail, whatever. Um, so I'd be curious for, for people, because I'm like, I think there are moments where it's okay to be proud, but I think maybe my upbringing has prevented me to be outwardly proud or, you know, I don't want to brag it because it feels weird or egotistical to to be bragging about things um so I'm, I'm wondering where you land on that idea yeah so I think and I haven't thought this out beforehand but yeah. I think I'm going to change the frame just a little bit to figure out like what is the most useful thing to do yeah. right and if mm-hmm. I think about like what is the most useful way to interact with or engage with pride mm-hmm. then pride is useful to me when I can think of things and use that to sort of bolster my spirits to take on more things Mm -hmm. or to try to accomplish things or whatnot in interpersonal situations. I'm I'm thinking this out as I say it, (laughs) Yeah. but in interpersonal situations, if I display pride, how is it useful to me? So if I display pride in a way that is merely saying, you know, like, Hey, I did this and, and, and I'm, I'm proud of it. And it makes sense in the conversation right? It's, it's a natural part of the conversation. Like, oh, I wrote a book. Oh, I like, that's must've been difficult. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And you know, I'm pretty proud of that. But if I were to display it in a way that's um, sort of aloof, right. Sort of like, oh, you know, like it's not good weather today or like there's fires over here. It's like, well, I just landed a million dollar deal with my company. It's like, okay, cool. I didn't ask. (laughs) <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so for me, I think it's, it's um, sort of more authentic authenticity piece. And then also kind of like being tuned in to, to the actual conversation. Mm. Um, because I also know that there are times where people are outwardly, or it looks like they're trying to be prideful or seems that way, but it's also rooted in some sort of like, I need you to validate that being proud of this is correct. And I think that's a super weak position to be in. But if you come from a position of, um, you know, you've, you've internally had this experience or cultivated this or whatever, then I think that's a much stronger place because you can go like, oh yeah, I am proud of this. And if the other person agrees or disagrees, it's not going to have that much impact. I don't know if any of that made sense. I want to give it back to you. I, th- I think so. I don't know. I don't know if I'm still like clear for myself (laughs) where where I stand. So I just being like, when is it? Okay. When is it not? Um, But I I would say, you know, I I think I have enough human life experience to kind of read the room and feel, feel people out hopefully. (laughs) Um, But I think I am, I tend to be that person that you know, doesn't want to brag or boast and be more humble, but you know, I, I realize I've done a lot. I've accomplished a lot. That is something to be proud of. Although just kind of an example that came up in my head was, you know, I, I help people struggle who struggle with anxiety and stress and really get to them to a place where, where they're much better, obviously. <laughs> and that's something I'm very proud of. 
And honestly, it doesn't matter to me whether other people know that or not. It's kind of like the self pride of me knowing that I've made a difference for that other individual. And that makes me proud. And I might not outwardly share it, but I'm just like in my own personal pride of like, wow, I made a difference. That's great. But on the flip side of being a business owner, it's like, oh, those wins, those successes, I should share about them. Um, I should get my, my patient to write a testimonial or do a video review or something because, and that gets that out there because that would help both business and help me help more people. But there is kind of like that, that resistance sometimes of like, oh, I don't want to bug them. Oh, I don't know if they want to do a testimonial, even though they told me they had a, such an incredible healing experience. Um, so sometimes there's, there's that inner conflict that happens with me of like, well, I know it would make a difference for people to, to know about it, like what I'm capable of. And yeah, it is almost validating for other people to realize that, yeah, no, I'm really good at my job. I've helped a lot of people. Um, and it helps when other people see that I've helped other people. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my, my rambling thoughts on this for now. Yeah. Well, that's actually pretty much exactly where I was thinking to take the conversation next, which is around sort of these more business or work oriented conversations, right? Because I think probably for the most part, unless you're really miscalibrated in social situations, uh, people tend to sh distribute or show like roughly the amount, for, right? Like roughly how much pride you should be showing. It's not yeah. super, super often unless someone is, they have to be like really on the edge for you to be like, wow, that person was extremely prideful. And I don't really know them. <laughs> I just met them randomly mm -hmm. at like mm -hmm. at whatever, but at work, at work, I feel like, or, you know, having a business, it's roughly the same thing. I feel like the line gets much trickier to walk. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've had this experience. I know I've had the experience of, of meeting someone at a job or during an interview or something else. And it just seems like so inauthentic, right? It's just like, mm -hmm. well, I did this and I accomplished it. Or right? like, if you look at link, oh everyone's LinkedIn profile, everyone's LinkedIn profile, like 47 time bestseller. And if you look at it and it's like bestseller on Amazon in the category of like, I don't know, purple pumpkins. And it's like, okay, well, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I do think, and I guess it maybe goes back to what is useful or at least that's what comes into my head. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's a lot trickier for that situation, right? Because you want to show the things that you have accomplished and what you're capable of, because that's how you get opportunities. You know, if you are, if you are 0% prideful or at the very least, like so humble, you're unwilling to share your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. You are very likely in a lot of circles to miss opportunities because people mm -hmm. who are making choices are going to not see what you've done or hear about what you've done. Right. Um, so I don't know if I have any advice particularly at this mm -hmm. moment, but that's what was in my head as, as we started, you know, talking, moving into sort of this discussion around pride and work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's a really good point that you made about interviews is, is of every, of every weird experience. Cause you're, you are supposed to like, all you're, what all you're doing is talking about what you've done and what you've accomplished. And it's an awkward situation sometimes, but it's like, if you don't, then, then yeah, you might not have that opportunity. Then they might be like, then why are you here? What are you doing here? <laughs> I didn't want to like talk about my accomplishments. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's it is an interesting situation and i'm not quite sure where where to go from <laughs> from that because it's like hmm i think it also comes down to like tonality and mood and attitude because i feel like i can hear someone talking about their accomplishments and i'd be like inspired and impressed versus i can hear maybe someone else, maybe they have the same exact accomplishments, but how they conduct themselves being like, oh yeah, I bought this convertible because I got a Pulitzer prize award or <laughs> something like, something like that. So that, that more arrogant feel, um, I think can make the difference between if I think this person is coming off of like, he's got way too much pride, or I might just say he just has arrogance 
uh, versus, oh, yeah, he has gotten a lot done. He should be very proud of what he's done. (laughs) Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm going to ask you a tangential question and see if we can pull anything out of it. But in your business, in your marketing, or in your discussions with potential clients or whatever, right? Same business realm. Yeah. How have you navigated sort of this line? Because I'm sure you have a number of things that you've done and a number of things that you could or could not share. So I'd be curious just what you've done and what you feel like has has worked for you best. Mm -hmm. You know, before I didn't really do a whole lot. It's just like people would find out about me through word of mouth and that's always the best referral. Um, But as I kind of transition more into working virtual and like then, you know, I'm exposed to an audience that has no idea who I am or doesn't know anyone that I know. So, so it's like, how do I build my credibility? So I did have to, you know, I have, because I've moved my business around so many times and I have a ton of testimonials on Yelp and Google, Facebook, um, but they're all in all these different locations. So basically what I did, I was like, I don't expect everyone to find all of them before they decide to work with me. So I basically took screenshots so they could see that they're like legit from like real places like Google and Yelp. And so when they're a prospective client, I I started just including those screenshots in the intro email. Like when they want to learn, they want more information. And I'm like, oh yeah, let me send you an email with just more information about the program, some testimonials, some sample lab reports. And then you can make an informed decision if this is right for you, kind of that way. And uh, yeah, I started to gather more video testimonials because that that's the real, like, you know, you can people may be able to fake like a written testimonial, but it's harder to fake a video testimonial. Although I guess it's possible, (laughs) less likely. So I think that helps solidify it a little more. So I just started sending people like links to the video testimonials on YouTube. And I, I, you know, I, I have no problem doing that in in a way I I'm proud of it. And I, I want them to watch it so they can maybe relate and connect to the person who's expressing where they were before they joined my program versus how, what they got out of it and how, where they are now after the program. Uh, so I think I've gotten to a point where I don't have a problem sharing the testimonials, but I, I guess I don't always generally, when I'm talking with them, I'm like, oh yeah, I totally a hundred percent can help you with this problem. I think for me, I'm, I'm always very, I try to be very transparent in that, you know, if I'm going to work with someone, they need to be willing to do the work. Uh, It's not going to be a quick fix overnight thing. It's going to be hard at times and I'm going to hold your hand through it, but we just have to keep moving forward even when you fall off the wagon and it's totally okay to fall off the wagon. Um, So I kind of set that context up for them as well as have them uh, realize that I'm not always being like, yeah, I helped this person do that. I helped this person do that. I just like send them links (laughs) to like videos and that's, that's about it. Um, but I do feel like since I've helped so many people, when I, when I feel like I am going to be able to truly help them, I'm, I'm straight about it when I'm not sure I'm straight about it. Um, because there's sometimes I don't think I can help a hundred percent of people that want me to work with them. So, yeah. So as you were talking, here's what I kind of pulled out, or at least what resonated with me. It seems like in those cases, focusing on the facts and authentic ways of presenting them is what is most likely to land. Because as you were talking about that too, I was sort of thinking a little bit about what are some of the things I see that I feel like are inappropriate displays of pride, right? And some people do have facts listed or share facts but they're also presented in a way that's not authentic, right? When someone says they're a 27 time bestseller and their categories are all bullshit, like that, that is not represented in a, in a true way. Like the way that it is represented is intentionally misleading. Mm. So I think, you know, if you, if, or at least, you know, work best for me, if I'm able to sort of show different aspects of things that are facts, right? So one example that you didn't mention is if you just said the number of people that you have successfully helped, right? I feel like that would be like a a useful piece of information for others who have, uh, who are like considering looking at it or whatever, or, you know, if you were in an interview, same type of thing, right? 
Mm-hmm. If, if you said, not that you have an interview for a business, but the same thing, yeah. you know, yeah. I successfully helped this many people and stick to things that are factual or like you were saying, if you can genuinely think you can help people or not help people, things that are authentic in terms of, you know, neither of those are necessarily a fact, but it's an opinion based on your experience, which is tied to what you really think. Like one of the things I hate the most is when I see marketing copy, like a hundred percent fix all your anxiety, no matter what. And it's like, that's not real. Yeah. And or give a hundred percent guarantee because it <laughs> depends on a lot of factors. Yeah. And sure. in like marketing copy, I guess, I guess people write that, but if I was talking to someone oh, and they yeah. say something like that, like, absolutely. I'm like, this person just, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Like there's these solutions don't work in that way. Anyway, mm-hmm. bringing it back. Um, I feel like it, it matters a lot if, if it's authentic and if your audience perceives it as authentic, right? They're, they're, are people who have very, very strong lists of accomplishments. And it goes, it goes back to also what you're saying, like the way people carry themselves or how they interact with others. Um, you know, if you have a big list of achievements, but you're treating other people with respect and, and dignity and, and not brushing people off and, and whatnot, then you're probably going to do fine. And if you have this big list of accomplishments and maybe some of them are kind of misrepresented and you're kind of treating other people like garbage and whatnot, then probably going to come across as very prideful Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely all right well I think we've covered this topic pretty well was there any like final thoughts that you have before we wrap up just to pull back to something we talked about I think I think pride can be useful and and can be something worth cultivating in the sense of using it in in a useful way right In, in the way that if you are finding things that you're proud of and using that to help push you to do more things Mm -hmm. or in the opposite, if you're feeling kind of down and like, ah, I don't think I can do this project. I don't think I can do anything. I suck. I always fail, you know, to combat some of these negative thoughts, then it can be really useful. But if you're uh, socially, it's, it's a little bit more dicey. You have to be a little bit more mindful of the ways that you sort of introduce pride and and use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a good, summary of what we covered today because it can be a little little tricky but I think it it can be a force used for good and and for even some people who who struggle to express their pride or or kind of downplay their accomplishments I think or they're stuck in like a dark place with themselves pride can help them push forward and get them um, to a better place mentally possibly possibly not a hundred percent guarantee but it's possible that it could could definitely help when you think about that actually one of the things that I learned from a sales coach that I was working with was to you know as part of your morning routine it's it's good to like listen to like your wins and your successes not not for anyone else but more for your own mental like to ramp you up and get you energized because if you're in sales it's really depressing when you get a lot of no's. So it's like, you, you gotta like listen to maybe like sales calls that were successful or, or you watch like um, personal development or books or trainings or whatever, or sales videos that like ramp you up in energy. So like re- referencing your wins kind of gets you in the better mindset of like, oh, I'm not a loser. <laughs> oh wait, I've done this before. I can, I can do it again. Yeah. So it it puts you in a better mindset for sure. Yeah. And that sort of internal pride is, it's just, it's useful. You know, if you, if you are not proud of anything you've ever done, (laughs) then that leaves you in a a state that's pretty, uh, I mean, it's just tied so directly to like self-esteem and confidence. And if you have no pride, then you generally don't have either of those things either. Mm -hmm. And then, um, it's hard to get future things done because you're fighting with your mind. Uh, so yeah, definitely has its uses. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. We appreciate you. If you appreciate us and want to spend more happiness in the world, be sure to like subscribe, share it right in the comments. What are you proud of? Be sure to share the pride <laughs> in a good way <laughs> and we will see you next time.
Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot. If you're looking for more content, there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.